Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker and this is going to be my Wizard of Legend Dash Arcana tier ranking. Now I've done tier lists on this game before, so you should know pretty much exactly what to expect from something like this. So as per usual we're going to get into our teaching time robe and we are going to be taking a, picking up a relic that in no way affects our damage so that we can get just a perfectly a perfectly objective rating on each of these different arcana now there are of course 23 different arcana there's one one dash arcana for each element or sorry five four words that i apparently don't know how to say four there are four Dash Arcana for each element, except for Chaos, in which there are only three. And for those of you that don't have any Chaos Dash, Dash Arcana, I will remind you that in order to get Chaos Arcana in general, you have to get through an entire run of the game and beat Master Sura at the end. There are multiple Chaos Arcana for every category, and anytime you unlock what would be a standard Chaos Arcana that has a signature version, you unlock it in both spots. That having been said, today's focus is on Dash Arcana. And we are going to be going over each of them based upon, based upon metrics like their damage, their overall usefulness and effect, how often you get to use them before they go on complete cooldown, and etc, etc. And also keep in mind that if one of your personal favorites does not end up making it to the top of my list, just remember, this is my list. This is how I rank them in the way that I use them. But I will be going over descriptions and reasonings as to why I choose the things that I choose, and we will simply go from there. I am, of course, willing to entertain conversations, so long as the conversations are kept civil, and so long as you don't come at me with things like, Hey, you fat ass! It's like, that's not how you start a conversation. At least address me as Mr. Fat Ass, okay? And I believe that does it for the disclaimer. I can't necessarily say that this is something that's going to be done in a vacuum, judging the merits of the Dash Arcana, you know, by themselves because most of these are meant to either set up something else or act in a very defensive manner. There is always something going on when it comes to the Chaos Arcana. Or sorry, not Chaos, Dash, I'm sorry. And usually it involves setting up something for something else to work, as none of these are necessarily gigantic offensive forces by themselves. So I believe that about covers it. I don't think I've missed anything, so we will go ahead and get into the ranking now. And we are going to start, as per usual, with the Fire Arcana. And we're going immediately into a contentious one. Ignition Rush. Ignition Rush is a, is a darling Dash Arcana. This seems to be at, at or near the top of the list for a lot of my audience. It is a spell that everyone seems to love using. I'm just going to come out and say it. I personally don't see it. But let's see what it does first. So, when you dash, you get surrounded by a fiery shield. Which just does minor damage and knockback by itself. So the obvious idea is that this is one of those things where you can just walk into enemies with it and get them off your back for, you know, the usual burn, burn damage of two a tick. And if you happen to have it upgraded, say, where is the idealist mirror? That's, that's the upgrade boy. It basically does the same thing, except for it also goes boom at the end. Yep, 
you'll notice that the boom at the end doesn't actually do any da any damage on its own. It just inflicts the burn status. Yep, aura explodes when it burns, setting enemies ablaze again. All right, so I will say this: I have experimented with that one. I've played around with it. I know why people like. It does act as a pretty okay get off get off me option, so long as you're just kind of running around already. I personally find that having it active messes with my personal combo game, and it doesn't and it doesn't actually act as very good protection against a lot of enemies. So with something like this, you're going to be doing your best work against essentially ghouls and knights. And even knights, if you stand still, they can still hit you through that fiery barrier because they're swinging at you with a sword. So if the enemy has a weapon, they can still hit you through that fiery barrier. But even, even, out, even outside of the knights, that means that you don't have perfect protection against... Lancers, you have basically no protection against against mages, archers, um, summoners. Like none of the, none of these enemy types necessarily are, are going to be greatly affected by you having a fiery bubble around you. Now, the whole idea is that it's supposed to is that it's supposed to keep enemies in hit stun and keep them off of you. But this is something that's good in theory. In practice, not pushing enemies away from you can make it difficult to land some of your combos if you're using a lot of melee-focused combo stuff. Like, it can really mess with your spark contact. I will, of course. Yeah, it makes it difficult to land all the hits of the spark contact. Not impossible, of course. I don't want to make it sound like I'm trying to drag this thing through the mud too much. It doesn't make it impossible. And there's also a good chance that if you're using this, you're probably not using spark contact. Let's be fair. But for me, this particular one doesn't do it. I see why people like it. It knocks enemies away from you and makes it so that while you're running around you have a hard time getting tagged but it doesn't make it impossible and with dash arcana being more more of a thing that that are focused on effect and defense i personally find the effect of this being rather lackluster like even in context where it would be good like say with a tearing whirlwind build i would still rather just set up cardis prime around myself or set up a dash that I can that I can use to leave a lingering effect behind after I've gathered up a bunch of enemies in my wake. So for me, Ignition Rush, it, it doesn't go in the very bottom tier. It still has uses, and so long as you're not in Zeal's territory, it still burns. But the idea that the minor knockback isn't really that effective, it doesn't do a it doesn't do a huge amount of damage, although it does leave a lingering status effect that does a good job. And the idea that it's ultimately not that protective causes me to put it in C tier. Now again, I'm aware that we're starting off hot with a contentious one, because I'm pretty sure everyone in my in my audience is going to disagree with me on that one, but I'm sorry, for me, Ignition Rush just doesn't do the job. It's... It is not very good, not to me. Now, I will also reveal a bit of my bias, which is that I am very much a player that really likes things like... like ra I like ranged combat a lot. Like, I really like ranged combat. And for me, Ignition Rush just, it doesn't do enough. Like, even when I am doing melee, I would rather leave other things behind for my enemies to deal with. So, just not a particularly strong option for me. You all probably disagree. I'm expecting you to disagree. 
But again, keep things civil in the discussion. Okay? Keep it civil. Now, let's move on to Searing Rush. Searing Rush just creates a wall of flame behind you. Not for very long, but the whole point of the wall of fire that it leaves behind is that... First of all, it's a stronger burn than Ignition Rush. And I do believe the point of it is to catch enemies in a trap, and it can also block projectiles. I think. It doesn't last very long, so it has to be with good timing or good luck. And when it's enhanced, you leave you create an explosion where you land after your dash. Now, obviously the explosion when you land from your dash is really nice. I would dare not say otherwise. The flames left behind in your wake, on the other hand, I really think that they should last longer in order for this to really be effective. Like, I wouldn't use this as a tackling option because it just has very little knockback. So it still leaves you in a position where if you're dashing into a gaggle of enemies, you're probably going to get tagged by something. And once you get tagged by one thing, it leaves you opened up to get tagged by other things, especially the way I play with the retro floor plan going. The idea that it blocks projectiles is more, is more or less an interesting addition, but not a primary focus, as if you're dashing, you're probably doing so to dodge a projectile in the first place. So, where do I put Searing Rush? I personally don't find Searing Rush to be all that useful. So, I'm actually going to put that in the same spot that I put Ignition Rush. I would actually say, again, don't hate me for not liking Ignition Rush. I'm sorry, everyone, you fans of Ignition Rush who love it so much. I'm not calling you out, trust me. I'm, it's just not for me. But, even with it not being for me, I still think it's better than Searing Rush. Searing Rush, to me, just doesn't do enough to really justify using it, but it is better than some of the things that will go down in bottom tier, and you will see those later. Alright, moving on from Searing Rush, we now have Magma Rush. Now, I will openly admit that I like this one because I'm kind of a fan of leaving behind little traps and decoys for my enemies. And as you can see, what it does is you just leave behind a little fiery dog poop for your enemies. And once they get within range, it chases them and explodes in their face. That is the initial range. And when you enhance it... It, the, the mines will last longer and have an increased blast radius, and I will, of course, show that off, because what kind of a person would I be if I didn't? See what I mean? And it's now affecting three of them with the Kaboom. You expected an earth-shattering Kaboom, and you kinda got it. There you go, and now... I understand that when you're looking at a window the size of a postage stamp, it can be hard to see the range increase, but there you go. So, Magma, Magma, Magma Lunch, that's what I was about to say, Magma Lunch. In case you like searing gulps of liquid incineration. Magma Rush, where do I put that? Well... I like it better than Ignition Rush and Searing Rush, but I am, I am aware of its flaws. Its flaws being that it can be a little slow to start up if you're in a tight situation, and even though it has a large amount of knockback and scatters enemies really nicely, it is one of those arcana that is a bit limited in its use because it doesn't have a whole lot of offensive application. Some, of course, but... Uh-oh. Apparently, I am supposed to be taking my meds. That's embarrassing to have go off during a tier list recording, but you know what? I'm leaving it in because, frankly, this is kind of a live thing anyway. 
Like, I'm not working off of a script, I'm just talking, so if you find that to be annoying, eh, sorry, but this is still just my stream of consciousness going. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm aware that Magma Rush has its faults, and because of its faults, even though I like it, my bias, even with bias attached, I can't put it any higher than B tier. Because I'm aware that it can be a little bit slow to start up, and with only have with it only having one use per cooldown charge, it makes it a little difficult to act as a reliable defensive option. I still like it, but I'm just aware of its faults. And now we move on to Flare Rush. Flare Rush, when you go to fire it off, just launches forward a series of fireballs. If they all connect on one opponent, they do 32 damage, but they don't all necessarily hit just one opponent. And honestly, 20 damage per, fi per fireball, including the burn damage, is not bad. Now when you enhance it, you conjure additional flares. It goes from 3 to 5. And I will show you that because it's pretty cool, you guys. Like, seriously. Now, see how that covers such a lovely wide area behind you? Now, it, it doesn't just hit enemies on the way forward. It definitely hits them from behind as well. Which means that Flare Rush has an easy time being something that you can use both defensively and offensively. It's got not a great amount of damage for a spell in general, but its damage isn't bad. And of course it leaves enemies burned. Or ignited is probably the better way to look at it. It's, it starts off behind you, and I just noticed this myself. But if you are starting it in the hallway here, the fireballs actually bunch up to go through the hallway. I did not know that before, so... Well, it didn't that time, but you saw it earlier. It's, um, it's only a minor effect, and it doesn't necessarily make it mean that all the fireballs will go through a narrow hallway. But it is neat that that is a thing that it's actually doing. Now, you guys have seen me talk about Flare Rush before. I personally really like this Arcana, but this time I think it's got the chops to back itself up. Flare Rush acts as a lovely defensive measure you can actually use it to put some offensive pressure on an enemy, like fire it off and then come in behind it to combo with whatever it is you're using. Like, I like Flare Rush, and I will happily put this in A rank. It doesn't quite reach the heights of the S tier badasses, but it's good. Like, I personally think it's really good and is definitely worth another look if you're trying to find a new Dash Arcana to play around with. So now let's come back to, well, not come back to, let's go to another element and we'll work our way down the list. Let's start with Airburst. Now, many of you may remember Airburst as the, essentially the very first basic starter arcana that you get. Now, those of you who were playing before the Phantom update, which reworked a lot of spells, are probably going... Yeah, but it didn't do any damage, so why are you even looking at it? Well, now it does. Now it does 15 damage. And for purposes of your builds, if you'll notice on the bottom, it counts as Dash Arcana, Movement Arcana, and Melee Arcana, giving it a lovely place in those Dark Katana builds. It doesn't quite come out fast enough to be used as a tackle, but, if, you, if the enemy is slightly behind you, it will hit them first frame activation. Really nice. It's also got a pretty fast cooldown. And, if we look at the upgraded version, it goes from being just a small burst from behind to just a gigantic air blast that also leaves enemies slow. Isn't that nice? Like... Because its base damage is 20, it also works out really well in power builds. 
and that lovely area of effect means that you've got something that really acts nicely. And hold on, I just realized that I should be using haste because it's I want to look at the base cooldown. Base cooldown is about What is that, roughly four seconds? And it only gets one use per cooldown charge, so it's difficult to really say that it's... that it's like the be-all, end-all of Dash Arcana, but it's still good. Like, I would still rate it rather highly, but you just have to be careful with how you use it. I also noticed that when it gets enhanced, it gets a damage buff of 5 damage, which I really like. Alright, so, anyway, Airburst. What have we decided? I think Airburst is a lovely addition to melee combo builds. It slots in nicely and gives you a lovely defensive buffer. And as you've seen, with just a little bit of cooldown reduction, it comes back pretty quickly. I, of course, cannot overlook the idea that it's got somewhat limited range, although it hits in a nice half circle around you when it's enhanced. And, like I said, the idea that it only gets one charge on one charge per cooldown limits it some. I would still say it belongs up here in A rank. It's a much better Arcana than it used to be. Like, much, much better. And I definitely say it's worth a look. Do I like it better than Flare Rush? Personally, I would say I like them about evenly. Like, these two positions can be interchanged. So, yeah, that's Air Rush. Or Air Burst. Air something. What's the name again? And Sarah Lost. Air Burst. Alright, let's go all the way over here and talk about Vortex Trap. This is one that I don't really know how to use. You dash forward, leaving behind a wind trap that propels nearby enemies into the direction of your dash. As you can see, it leaves it where you land, and it pushes enemies in the direction that you came from. So it's an interesting defensive option. It's one that I haven't played around with very much. Maybe I should. And if if we enhance it, the traps will stay out longer and have enhanced range. Kind of like Magma Rush in a way. All right. So I think it's odd that this is something that's being... Oh, pardon me. I think it's odd that this is something that's on the Dash Arcana when this could just be a standard. But I think it gets the job done. It is another another like, trap where it just leaves something behind for your enemies to have to deal with, which is fun. And it has an interesting defensive application while keeping enemies off your back. But the idea that it takes a few that it takes a few frames to start up makes it a little bit difficult to use to use in a truly defensive fashion when you're like being chased. But it lasts a while, so what you what you would likely want to do is set is set those up to have your enemies walk into them. And the idea isn't necessarily all about, you know, manipulation of their positioning, more so as just a stay away from the option. So, actually, really interesting there. It's something that I should play around with some more. I traditionally don't go to this one, but it might be fun to actually give it a whirl and see what it's all about. So, where will I put Vortex Trap? I think the idea that it has a bit of a delay on on its activation before it comes into play hurts it, but the idea that you can at base lay two of them is really nice. 
And it gives you just a little bit of an extra window of protection when you're using whatever it is you're using. I would use this on a ranged build myself. Um, I think I'm going to put it in B rank, and we'll just kind of go from there and see what I think of this. I'll have to play around with that one a little bit more. But, yeah, again, you're kind of seeing the trend here where the ones that lay traps for your enemies are eh, more or less average. Alright, now let's move on to one of the newer ones, Wind Salvo, which was first introduced during the Phantom update. This, you dart forward and launch a series of wind bullets. Now, I've, I've had gripes with this one in the past. Because it's something that launches... Because it's something that launches projectiles forward, I think those projectiles should at least follow you, if not come out a little bit ahead of you. That having been said, if you dash past an enemy with it, all three of the shots will hit them for, you know, a grand total of... What is that? 20, like, 26 damage, roughly? 24... Mm, magnificent. That one will be 25. But it just comes in in a straight line behind you and just does a little bit of damage and then pisses off. And if you enhance it... It summons more arrows and the arrows have more hits, so let's see. So it summons five of them instead of three of them. So it covers a slightly wider area, because they're not all hitting the one dummy. Honestly, I really feel like Wind Salvo is kind of a dud. This one is one of those Dash Arcana that I really can't rely upon. Like, it doesn't do a lot of damage. If you're dashing past enemies like that, it actually pushes them towards you with its minuscule knockback. It doesn't do a lot of damage, it doesn't leave behind a status effect. Like, it just, it's just a thing. It's a thing that exists because... thing. And I don't, and I'm not even, not even gonna sugarcoat it, I don't like this one. I don't think Wind Salvo really does enough to justify it taking up a very, a very useful slot for defensive arcana. And let's be fair, usually when you're thinking about dash arcana, you are thinking about using them in a defensive fashion because you're either darting away from enemies or past them, or if you're or with the few that can be used really offensively, you're dashing towards the enemy to make use of what you got. Well, towards them or past them to hit them with something coming out behind you, you get the idea. Wind Salvo, because, it, because the objects that it summons are delayed, doesn't do much to act on an offensive nature, even though it goes out ahead of you. And it doesn't do enough to cover you from behind either, so what is Wind Salvo good for? I believe we all know how the song lyrics go. Absolutely nothing. Say it again, yeah! So, there's our first D tier. Congratulations, Win Salvo. You suck. And that leaves us with Razor Burst. So, I'm just going to get the negatives out of the way on Razor Burst first, because there are too many positives to list. Dash forward and create a vortex of cutting winds. So, part of the problem with this one, it has a long cooldown. See, it, o it also only does about, you know, 20 to 22 damage, roughly. So, it its base damage is about 20, but if you manage to score a critical on its 5 hits, you'll get 22. Or more, if you're designed for critical. But, as you can see, it covers a nice, a nice large circular area, and it, and it lingers for just long enough to really catch enemies out. 
this is one of those where because of where it drops it, where it's like somewhere in between where you start and where you end, you can actually plan this out and use it really effectively in an offensive manner, but it leaves it far enough behind you where if you want to keep going, you've got a nice little defensive buffer zone there. And the slowdown status actually makes it so that you're pretty safe afterwards. And if you enhance it, the vortex lasts longer. You now have you now have two additional hits. So you're now doing 28 total damage with the full combo. And it's still leaving behind that slow effect, but the idea that it lasts just those extra few frames makes it so that you can catch more enemies out on it on a defensive in a defensive fashion and offensively you've got more damage and hits to work with so you can combo even harder like i said the one downside or the two downsides is that it only get is it only gets one use per charge and that it has a bit of a long cooldown but Otherwise, Razor Burst gets full marks for me. I really like Razor Burst, and you'll notice that I use Razor Burst a lot in my videos. I think it it hits the perfect blend of defense to offense, and I find that it, le it leaving enemies slowed down makes it so that they have a harder time retaliating against me because, look at that, by the time that they're done with their with their bull with you know getting knocked around and slowed down i'm all the way over here now obviously no battle room is just a straight line but say you come over here now you've got more time to set up come in punch him in the face a few times you know how it goes so yeah razor burst a-okay in my book i love me some razor burst we now move on to the Earth Elemental Dash Arcana. Let's just go ahead and get this one out of the way. Tunneling Drive. At least it conjures all of the... All of the projectiles right away. So you're seeing the advanced version. But here's, here's the thing. The little explosion at the end... It only does 5 damage, and if that's the only thing that's changing, then yeah. Also, this one's got a really long cooldown. Why does it have a really long cooldown? I don't know, I think they were... They think, I think they were, their thought process was, okay, well you're getting all of these... All of these on a slightly faster delay than Wind Salvo, and they're all coming out at once. So let's make it so that that only happens once in a blue moon. Yeah, that sounds fair. Oh, and also if it's not enhanced, you only have three drills instead of four. So they linger when they hit the enemy, but frankly, so does Wind Salvon. That didn't save it. So each drill does about seven hits for three damage each, so you get about 21 damage. 26, of course, if you're if you've got the explosion at the end from the enhanced version. But yeah, the really long cooldown and the idea that once again the projectiles start behind you after a bit of a delay and yeah, it's I will say it's slightly better than Wind Salvo, but I still don't think it white makes it up to C rank. I think it comes in at high D. Like, again, I like it better than Wind Salvo, but that's not saying much. I like a lot of things better than Wind Salvo. I think, I think we can all agree that that one is not particularly good. So sorry, Tunneling Drive. But... That's, that's not where the crap ends with the Earth Elemental dashes. Let's talk about Toxic Trap. This is one of those that leave something behind for your enemies to deal with. In this case, it's a puddle of Toxic Poo. Now, I've talked about how much I think Poison is iffy in this game. But let's be fair, for a dash, doing 30 damage in total is kind of nice. You get four slow ticks of five and the initial ten. 
so it's not like it's not like it's not doing any damage, but you'll notice it doesn't last very long. And poison isn't as effective against your enemies as it is against you. It leaves the trap roughly where you started, so for something that leaves a obstacle well, an obstacle behind for your enemies to deal with, it leaves it in about the right spot. But because it's not because it's not doing a whole lot to really to really slow them down, like they'll touch it and then they'll just kind of run through it. Like that's the thing. Like this that that delay is really only slowing down archers and they're far enough back that you're not targeting them with a toxic trap. It's also got kind of an unfortunately long cooldown time. It's not the most unforgiving cooldown time I've ever seen, but it's not good either. You only get one charge per... So you only get one charge per cooldown. I should. I guess I should say one charge per use. It doesn't last very long. It, it's, it's just not good. Like, I'm sorry, but with how undertuned poison is in this game, I really can't recommend anyone use Toxic Trap. Like, I'm pretty sure most of us... Most of us would say we've had better times having a colonoscopy performed on us. So, no, sorry Toxic Trap, you are so far the biggest garbage tier letdown of, of the video. Will that continue to be the case all the way through? I guess we'll find out. So, next up we've got... let's go Entangling Vines. Now this one's interesting, and I think the any problem that I have with Entangling Vines is because it's hard to use. Wait, hold on. I just realized I forgot something. I forgot to show the enhancement. What does the enhancement do? You throw an extra toxic bomb forward. So I want to show you guys what that looks like because we are trying to be as fair and objective as possible. Yeah, so now instead of instead of one giant pile of toxic waste, you get two giant piles of toxic waste. That stay on screen for for just a little over one second. Yeah, no, sorry, it still it still remains in D tier. So now let's go back to entangling vines. Now, by, by nature, this one is difficult to use because the whole point of it is that it snares enemies from behind you and pulls them towards you. And if you have the enhanced version, it roots and poisons. Now, poison, like I said, not very useful. It, I'm sorry, it just isn't. Not in this game. But the idea that it roots enemies means that you can set yourself up to do some interesting things. Like, just off the top of my head, like, let's say that you're running, oh, I don't know, Raging Inferno. You can go, hey guys, and now you've got all day to sit here and charge it up so you can hit them in the face with a giant ball of rotating fiery death. Like, this is meant to combo with. And it actually comes out a pretty decent distance behind itself, too. See how far how far it went out of its way to grab that dummy? And now, if we use it from the dead center of... Yeah, it doesn't go that far. But yeah, it actually has a much greater range than it seems like it would. And it's also rooting and poisoning enemies to, again, set them up for things like that, or just for other combos in general. Like, this is something that you use when you're dashing past a group of enemies to, to clinch them with some damage and set them up for combos. And I personally like that. But I will say that this particular Arcana is difficult to use because it kind of goes against a lot of the usual uses of Dash Arcana, as this is more of an aggressive one than a defensive one, even though it does essentially come up from behind you. But the idea that it pulls enemies towards you can make it difficult to use, 
and that cooldown time is just, it's, it can be brutal. I will say that. So where do I put Entangling Vines? I'm going to put it in a high B. Like, I actually think Entangling Vines has a lot of, has a lot of potential. And if used properly, you can really set up some interesting combos with it. Like that one in Vortex Trap, I really need to play around with some more to really get the feel for how they work. Back to the game now. And finally, for Earth Elements, we're doing Spike Track. Now let's go ahead and put away the mirror. And I'll just show you Spike Track. Spike Track is one of those that seems really odd. Like, you first look at it and you go, okay, that does, that's, that's like, that's like Searing Rush. You didn't like Searing Rush, so what's the deal with this one? Well, let's start, let's start with the obvious point of it hits for a, at least for a Dash Arcana, a whopping 35 damage. Like, holy crap, that's a lot for a Dash Arcana. The, the very tip of the spike track is just right there with you as you're just creating the spikes as you're dashing. So it actually is an effective tackle. It doesn't do a lot of knockback, but it does do a lot of damage. And I do believe that amount of damage leaves enemies at least a little bit stunned. Like, it hits if you dash past enemies, and now I'll show you the enhanced version, which actually strikes ahead of you. You know, if it doesn't hit a wall. See what I mean? It does the same amount of damage, but it has a much, has a much longer active time, and here's the thing that a lot of people don't know about Spike Track. And it's really hard to show it off in this setting because these guys aren't moving. But while the spikes are active, if, if an enemy just walks into one of these spikes before it recedes back into the earth, it still hits them for full damage. So you use it and only now is it inactive. So it actually lasts longer than it seems like it does. And for 35 damage, that's, you know, and the ability to use it very aggressively like that, that's worth it. That's basically just 35 raw damage. And I wish you could use it more often, but it's, like, it's cooldown leave some room to be desired for like 4.5 seconds is not the is not the friendliest cooldown in the world but hey i will definitely take that over some of the other cooldowns that we've seen on this list so let's pick up our train again and we will now rank spike track and i think spike track sits at a comfortable a rank So you've got two Earth Elemental Dash Arcana that are trash tier, one that's average or slightly above, and one that's decidedly above average. I guess they're they're kind of all over the place. Not as much as wind. But we still have other elements to look at. So next we go down to our Water Arcana. Sorry, our Lightning Arcana. I was completely wrong. And we're going to start with Shock Line, because this is one that is difficult to rank. Only because it doesn't, it just outwardly doesn't look like it does a lot. Like, all it, it leaves behind just a line of electricity with, what was that, a 4.8 second cooldown? No, that's a 5 second cooldown for that. Like, is it really worth it? But... The thing is, it does linger there just long enough to create a nice little defensive wall. I think it blocks projectiles, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it does. And what happens when we enhance this bad boy? Well, according to this, it throws an additional shock line in front of you, which means you now have the ability to act aggressively with this. 
And even though it just lays the status effect and doesn't really do any damage by itself, it is a nice little defensive buffer zone that you can use to catch enemies out and either open them up for combos or just give yourself some room to maneuver. So it's a nice little defensive, defensive buddy. I'm not sure where exactly I would place it, but it is my job to decide, so I'm just going to have to go ahead and do it. Like I said, this one is difficult because its effects are, un are undersold and understated, but they are effective when you're using it. I don't know, I'm thinking for this one, I'm putting it in low B. The cooldown time of 5 seconds is a little harsh for something that only gets one use, and the idea that those barriers of electricity don't last very long, I have a hard time really recommending this one to people. Like, I don't think it's completely god-awful, but it is difficult to use. But is it as difficult to use as Circuit Line? Let's find out. So, on the positive side, with Circuit Line, you get three uses. Kind of. But here's the thing, all three of those uses go into essentially one effect. And that effect is thus. One, two, three. So, you can... you can draw your favorite... <laughs> you can draw your favorite things like parallelograms or you know, just line segments. Like, you can get very geometrical with this. You, you can make the letter V and make a triangle, because all of the points do connect at the end. But is it worth it? Well, let's check the damage. First of all, it doesn't shock them. Second of all, having to put in three dashes worth of effort for 16 damage... It's in, oh, 14 in that case. Yeah, that's a hard pass. Like, this one, I like... I saw what they were going for. You're just trying to create a damaging circuit. And that idea in and of itself is interesting. But it doesn't leave the enemies... It doesn't leave the enemies paralyzed very long, and the damage is pretty subpar. What happens when we upgrade it? Lightning chains deal additional damage, so... Let's check that. One, two, three. And they last longer, so the game doesn't tell you that, but they last longer. And after all that, we got to 22 damage with a critical hit. That guy took 36, so he was obviously in the greater epicenter of things. So, somewhere out there, someone is really getting off on, draw on drawing shapes on the ground to create their favorite trapezoids and, you know, parallelograms in order to damage enemies. I say, why not just throw a bolt of lightning at them and be done with the whole mess? So yeah, circuit line, it's a little it's a little too convoluted in a fast-paced action game to have a lot of effect. It doesn't last long enough for the cooldown that you're forced to endure for the whole thing. And that's the thing, the cooldown is it looks great, but then, but if you use it before it's completely cooled down, you only get part of its effect. I suppose what I'll say is that that part isn't so bad. With each charge having a couple, having like what, a, yeah, let's go one, two, three, having a roughly three second cooldown. Or longer than that, actually. Yeah, each each charge has about a four second cooldown. Like, did they really think that this Arcana was so broken that it needed that long of a cooldown? No, I'm sorry, but this one is just atrocious. Like, I can see people making arguments for... 
making arguments for, you know, tunneling drive or wind salvo. But this one, no, not a chance. This one is just plain awful. Like, I can't really even understate how much that one sucks. Like, it'd be one thing if the design allowed for something like that to work a little better. Oh, by the way, I got these backwards, so let me change this up on the list. You go here, and you go here. Alright. But yeah, for something that convoluted, you would think it would either do more damage, or last longer, or have a better defensive application. No, none of that. No, it's just, it's terrible. That is, hands down, like, I actually think Toxic Trap is still worse, but I'll adjust it when I get back to it. It's Lightning's version of leave something behind for the enemies to deal with. But it doesn't leave it behind for very long. Or for very much effect. And there are other things that do it better. I, I don't know why that was added to the game. I really don't. But we're moving on now. We're, we're done talking about Circuit Line. We're moving on to Volt Tracer. Forms an electrified afterimage that tracks your path and explodes when it catches up to you. And there you can see more fully what it does. And you get two charges you get two charges of it per or two uses of it per charge, which I think is nice. And it has about a 3.5 second cooldown for each charge. And I think it's the idea that the after images coming in behind you go through all the enemies that's, that you dash around is what makes this so interesting. Now it's not a... It's not a very good defensive Arcana though, I will say that. Like, they can hit enemies behind you, but because the traces come in... Yeah, because the after images come in at a bit of a delay, it's kind of hard to recommend this for defensive use. And for the same reason, offensive use is a little limited too. But if you're just dashing through a group of enemies, Volt Tracer comes highly recommended. And now the electric explosion is larger and deals more damage. Honestly, I still think this is good. It's the, and the idea that you get multiple after images per charge is really nice. And of course, because of how enemies move in the higher in the higher ranks of the levels, you can put this to pretty good use. Yeah, you can put it to pretty good defensive use because the enemies are going to be trying their best to dart around you to try to get work done. So very good for messing with messing with the more aggressive enemies. Obviously against archers and mages you'll have a harder time. I'm also not sure how well it would work in PvP, so let's get this out of the way. The ones that I'm ranking really poorly probably have a greater effect in PvP, like in Circuit Line, like, in, that, in the case of that one, you're darting around all over the place anyway to avoid being hit. So, in PvP, I imagine that's much stronger. This one is definitely better for PvE, and I would say Volt, Tra Volt Tracer gets... Uh, I think I'm going to put it, put it here. I'd say it's a pretty solid B. Or do I like it more than me? I think I'm going to put it about there. It's solid. Not great, but solid. And it's still very possible to get work done with Volt Tracer. It's just a matter of you're going to be getting most of that work done by working with a really bad habit, which is dashing through enemy groups instead of either away from them or standing your ground. So it reinforces a bad habit, and that in and of itself is a reason is a reason to keep it a little bit lower on the list. But its effect is good, and I think it's 
I think he, leaving its spot in kind of the kind of the lower end of the B rank as it sits right now is probably about accurate. So now we move on to Thunderline. And yeah, this one is just fantastic. The initial burst does a good amount of damage. It leaves enemies shocked. You get two uses of it per charge. So you can go Thunderline, Thunderline. Like, it's just really good. I think this one should be called, like, Thunder Jolt or Thunder Shock myself. But I think it's good. It does have a bit of a long cooldown in, in between its uses. Yeah, 4.5. But in this case, I think there's a reason for it. This hits a very large area. And I think it does a fantastic job keeping enemies off of you. That initial hit will create enough stun, even against enemies that are immune to shock, to keep them, to keep them kind of off your back. And when it's enhanced, the shock lasts longer, and the burst covers a greater duration or greater area. And because of where it drops the burst right where you started it's great for it's great for defense and it leaves enemies stunned long enough for either an aggressive follow-up or if you know where it's starting you can actually use it aggressively which is a good idea to combo bosses with thunderline in my opinion is another one of those that's pretty much the full package because of where the thunder jolt starts because of its area of effect because it's leaving a lingering status effect to hold enemies back with. Thunderline is just fantastic. And it gets two uses, which I think puts it above Razor Burst. So there you go. As of right now, Thunderline is one of the best Dash Arcanas in the game. And it's not situational. Like, this is good for both PvE and PvP. So, so far, we've got ourselves a we've got ourselves a real winner, but will that change when we look at the water arcana? Let's have a look, and we're gonna start from the back and work our way front, starting with Frostwing. Frostwing throws icy feathers behind you that damage and leave a re leave a really nasty status effect. My one the so it's got damage is whatever, it's the status effect that you're using it for. That having been said, this is really good for a power build because each one of those feathers is hitting for 20, and obviously 30 on a critical hit. And you're leaving four of them in a nice little wake behind you. Oh, come on, I want to hit all four of them with one dash. Oh well, but you're getting the idea. Now, the big problem I have with this is that it's got such a long cooldown. Seriously, that's a greater than 5 second cooldown? Let's have a look at this again. Dude, was that was that 6 seconds or was it 5.8? That is a 6 second cooldown, like, oh my god! Like, that is a ridiculous cooldown for a dash arcana, something that you're relying on for, for a little bit of even for a little bit of defensive <laughs> buffering. Like, that is a ridiculously among a, a ridiculously long time to be without your dash in a game that's fast-paced as Wizard of Legend. I will not deny though that the effect is very strong. It does good damage and it leaves enemies frozen. Just hope you don't need it again before before they <laughs> unfreeze. And the enhanced version hits a greater fan with six projectiles. So, I won't lie, I really like Frostwing. Like, I think the idea that it hits with a very powerful status effect and hits for a decent amount of damage really gives it some legs. But a six second cooldown for a dash arcana? Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. So, again, if I look past my own bias for Frostwing, because I want to put it in B or A rank just for the freeze effect, 
end the 20 damage, but a 6 second cooldown, 6 seconds to be without one of your primary defensive tools? That's a hard sell, so I think I have to put it down here in a high C rank. That's just too much. Like, again, I... It sound it doesn't sound like it's that bad. Six seconds. But think about what can happen in six seconds in Wizard of Legend, especially if you have the retro floor plan going. Like that's harsh. So definitely run this if you're running a power build, because you might be able to have the room of enemies dead before that six seconds is up. Or be running it with a cooldown reduction build so that you get it back more often. Something like the Spice Rack or the Destructive Abacus will definitely make that one much more tolerable. Alright, now let's move on to Bubble Blast. This one leaves, just creates a burst of bubbles in your wake. I, does this really deserve a 5 second cooldown? Now, the whole point is to create essentially a minefield that your enemies will have a hard time navigating. You're not using it for damage, you're using it just, just to create a bunch of little decoys to cover your butt. Also, while the bubbles exist, I'm pretty sure they block projectiles, so... It has its uses. And when you upgrade the bat... <laughs> might, it might just be bad. But it increases the size of all the bubbles, but they don't last any longer. But they go from doing 4 damage to 5, which is nice. Like, this one feels like a really mixed bag. Like, the idea behind it is good, but the bubbles really need to last longer to have a more meaningful effect. Like, timing it to block projectiles with is actually kind of difficult. And that is a shame to have to say, because if the bubbles just lingered a bit longer, I would have more positive things to say about it. As is, it's a what you're using it for and its effect is not bad. You're essentially, it's essentially another get off me option or stay away from me option to use with a ranged build. That I can understand. But the bubbles just don't last long enough, and on something like this, to have a 5 second cooldown is a bit much. That having been said, I can I can see where I can see where people kind of dig this one. It's not for me, but I would say high C to low B, that seems pretty generous for this one. Like I've actually put it in about the same rank as as the Jolt, whatever it's called. It's not Circuit Line, it's this one. But I would put it in about the same place. It get, it does a little bit better because it covers a wider area. Um, shock Line, that's it. It does a little bit better than Shock Line at keeping enemies off of you, but it also doesn't create that additional one in front of you when it's upgraded. It just makes the bubbles bigger and do 5 damage instead of 4. So, I don't know. This one is a very mixed bag. I like the idea. The execution is the problem. So yeah, that one I can't really rank any higher than where it is, so... Sorry, fellas, that one... I know there are a lot of people that like Bubble Blast, and whereas I can understand, I just don't think it lasts long enough, and it doesn't create enough of a choke point. And even though my windows are closed, I bet you can still hear that train, and it sucks, and I'm sorry. I just live in, I live in an area near train tracks, and that's just really throwing, a, throwing off my entire groove. Hear that train, you threw off the Emperor's groove. Yeah! <laughs> no! You threw off my groove! I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Sorry! Can we throw the train out the window? Alright, let's move on to Frost Faint. Frost Faint just leaves behind a Sub-Zero Ice Clone. It leaves it behind for a decent amount of time. 
But as you can see, it doesn't move, and each one has a, what is that, a roughly 3, 3.2 seconds... Yeah, it's roughly 3.2 second delay. Well, the second clone takes a little bit longer to come back than the first one, but yeah, you're seeing the idea. So I think each... Each clone has a four second delay, roughly. And again, it's hard to show you what it does. It's hard to show you what this does, but I can I can still manage it. So it does about 12 damage and leaves enemies frozen. Now, because you get two uses of that, you get two clones to place in hopefully the most disadvantageous position for your enemies. Now, in PvE, this suffers the additional bonus of it draws enemy attention. So enemies will literally turn away from you to attack the Frost Faint because they're going, Oh my god, there he is! And it gets even better when you upgrade it because now you're dropping two of those per dash, one where you started and one where you end. And that's, like, again, they don't last as long as I would like them to. But for my money, Frostfaint does more than enough to get the job done. And this has applications for ranged builds, it has applications for melee builds. It's just got a lot of applications. It leaves enemies frozen, so if you've got something that does a strong one-hit, a strong single-hit effect at afterwards and say the hunter's stiletto you can really get a lot of work done with that so where do i land frost faint frost faint i'm pretty sure i would put up in high a like i actually like it a little bit more than flare rush and i was already singing the praises of flare rush I really think Frost Faint is a beautiful dash. It does exactly what you want a dash arcana to do. It leaves behind something for your enemies to deal with and gives you a defensive buffer zone to set up your next to set up your next offensive action. And if you're a really defensive player, it still does the same thing while allowing you to set up more walls for your enemies to deal with. Like, I just think it's really good. This one definitely gets the Dark Sage Walker seal of approval. But, what about Wavefront? This is another one that I really like. Wavefront... Now, one of, the, one of its effects I can't really show you here. But, let's just get into it. Wavefront, when you cast it... Well, first of all, it can hit enemies from slightly behind you, which I think is nice. Like, really nice. And it travels forward a pretty good distance, starting on you, and only going forward from there. So, you can really affect a lot of enemies with this. It does an okay amount of damage over multiple hits, so definitely something that's, in my opinion, well used aggressively with a critical hit-based build. It is... Neither projectile or melee, though, so you're not getting anything out of Dark Katana with it. But its real use is that while, while it's covering you, it is a shield. Like, it's hard to show it, but do you see that blue bar? Of course you would obscure my character. But do you see the blue bar over your head? That shows that you can, that it's got some durability to it. So while you're darting forward, you have a shield that has some durability to it. And when you upgrade the Arcana, that shield is doubled. Enhances shield durability. So it doesn't do any more damage, but the shield is just, the shield can absorb more damage. I believe it's somewhere between 40 and 50 damage when it's enhanced, and it's about 25 when it's not enhanced. Now this, this Arcana is very strong because it gives you essentially an out from 
from some really pesky attacks. Like you can dart, you can dart through mage fireballs. You can clank with a knight's sword or a lancer's, well, lance. Their wavefront actually opens up strategies that aren't really possible with other dash arcana because none of the rest of them have a shield. And that is very powerful. Like, Wavefront is a, such a powerful effect that they have to give this... Yeah, also the huge knockback. Like, this really gets enemies off your butt. You can push them into pits. Like, it does so much. But the one... The two big downsides to it. The six, six second cooldown, again, for a dash arcana. That's really hard to overlook. And the idea that it only gets one one use per charge. Those are two, those are two very bad things that I just said about this otherwise immaculate defensive arcana. That having been said, if those are the two worst things about it, I think it still lands firmly in low S grade. Like Wavefront is super good and super popular for a reason. And I don't think anyone is going to argue with that placement. Like, maybe it would be better placed in high A because the two downsides are really big downsides. Actually, yeah, I just convinced myself that that's the right place for it. But I still say it's very good. Like, there's no getting around that Wavefront can be a real game changer. It's just held back by those law by that long cooldown time and only having one charge. But if you start with you know some cooldown reduction or the ring of reserves, which works on just about all dash arcana, then that mitigates some of the problem. And yeah, I I seriously say Wavefront can be a real game changer. All right, and that just leaves us with the Chaos Arcana. Now, the Chaos Arcana all have one thing in common. They only have one level of enhancement, and that is, you know, upgraded. Or rather, it only does one thing because there's no upgrade for it, however you want to look at it. So, there's no going back and forth on this one, it just is what it is. Or rather, for the next three. And let's start with Phantom Order. Phantom Order has a five and a half second cooldown, but can you really blame someone when the effect is that widespread? Like, look at that. It covers the entire room with just a blanket of magical force. Look at that. So, I wish it counted as a summon arcana, but it doesn't. It actually just counts as movement and dash. But if you if you can it also doesn't get a specific number of charges. But if you use it with something like the breezy gray canvas, which is actually under defense, silly me. Like every now and again it just fires off randomly because it's essentially getting that one charge back. It does mean, however, that the Ring of Reserves won't do anything for it. But, see, the thing is, does it matter when the effect is that pronounced? Like, if there's anything that should be on a 6 second cooldown, it's this, not Frostbite. Like, all of the fireball, all of the fireballs have really decent knockback. Five damage each is not necessarily anything to be understated. And if you do it right in an enemy's face, you're going to hit them with a lot of hits and a lot of damage. And this is one of those things where I think it's actually better against larger enemies and bosses that don't knock back very much because you'll hit them with more fireballs. Just dash in their face and let loose with the force. So, yeah, Phantom Order. Where do I place Phantom Order? Like, you have to believe that Phantom Order, it just goes up here. Like, there's really no arguing with that one. It's, the effect is too pronounced, it's too big, and it's even when it isn't doing a lot of damage, it's offering you a lot of control. 
and that is worth a lot for a Dash Arcana, because control is the name of the game with Dash Arcana. You want your Dash Arcana to help even the odds of it, because, with the exception of, like, Spike Track and Air Burst, it's not all about damage for Dash Arcana, and this controls a lot of space. Like, even, even getting half the fireballs blocked by the... <laughs> blocked by the hallway, you'll still see that... We're still getting eight balls of force out there at varying degrees and trajectories. Like, that's absurd. So yeah, Phantom Order, very high up in my book. Next up, we get Chaotic Echoes. This one does get charges. And what each charge does is it summons a pair of a pair of shadow buddies to go out and tackle, acting as your defensive lineman. But don't think that that's all that this one does, because this is one of this is one of the only Arcana that lets you straight up tackle bitches. And your shadows tackle right alongside you, all of you doing twelve damage. And it's actually not a bad way to charge up your signature. So, it's... Like, this actually does good damage, and because you can do it kind of rapidly, and you just smash through enemies while you're doing it, this has the grand effect of working well with most types of builds. Like, it counts as... Okay, so it doesn't count as projectile or melee, but either way, if you've just got a good critical hit rate, you can make that work pretty well. If you're running a power build, you're doing above 10 damage, so those, percenti those percentages of damage will stack up pretty quickly while you're just tackling enemies to death. Like, this one... It doesn't do a lot of damage per hit, but it's that you can do so many hits in such quick succession. And it does get charges, so you can conjure a bunch of clones by doing things like using the Breezy Gray Canvas, using the... I believe they're the Greased Boots, the ones that upgrade your... Let me see if I can find them, but they upgrade your dash and make it go off multiple times. Oh, and the Boots of Frenzy, which makes it so that you get a chance to temporarily add unlimited charges to your Dash Arcana. Yeah, that can be a really strong effect when you've got something like this that just continuously adds more and more Shadow Clones. Where are the other Boots? Here they are. Yep, it enhances your Dash and lowers its cooldown, so that's a good way to... Yeah, as you can see, with the boots on, it lowers your cooldown to 2.5 seconds. That's ridiculous. Without the boots, you're looking at... 4 seconds. So that is... That is a hefty inc increase in your... In your cooldown reduction. Like, let's see if it says what the percentage increase to your cooldown reduction is. 40%. 40%. That is huge. So yes, if your build really revolves around having your dash arcana to aid you in, you know, offense, defense, or frankly, you know, if your dash arcana is important, start with the greased boots. But outside of the greased boots, Chaotic Echoes is a really powerful arcana that does something really unique. It basically lets you dash into enemies for damage. It creates shadows. Like, it's... This is the exception to the rule of Dash Arcana are not supposed to be offensive forces. This one absolutely is. And because you get an effect out of it, no matter where you are in your cooldown, this one really shines. Like, I would actually put this above Razor Burst, not above Thunderline, but definitely above Razor Burst. And that just leaves one Arcana. But Dark Sage, I see three icons. We're getting to that. 
And this is the one that you all knew we were saving for last. Those of you who have been playing Wizard of Legend for a while know exactly why Chaotic Rift is so infamous. Like, I can't really show it to you here because they put up the walls properly. But in dungeons, you can go through narrow walls. It has a longer range than your normal dash animation. It takes you from point A to point B while skipping the space in between, meaning that you can dodge everything. You're just intangible from point A to point B. Because it has a longer dash range, it actually, up it actually upgrades your movement speed by quite a bit. Which is perfect if you have something like the, like the, what is it, the boots that, the ones that make you triple dash, but lower your movement speed. I forget what they're called, but that makes this ridiculous. And with those boots, you can actually skip the ending cutscene by just teleporting right past everybody. Like, you can literally take that and the, I think it's the heavenly boots, I'm not sure. But you can actually seriously take that and go, all right, I'm out, I'll see you guys later. This one has absolutely no offensive ability. But when your defensive and movement-based abilities are enhanced by as much as they are just by picking this, does it really matter? Like, that's the thing, and I think that's why... This Arcana reigns as the king of Dash Arcanas. And that is because it does something that the others don't do. It makes you invincible. It makes you fast. It, it just makes you powerful. All by itself. It's like that bad habit that I cultivated... Hold on, I'm going to reset these guys just because I can. That bad habit that I have of dashing through enemy groups, I learned that because of this Arcana, because it just makes you that... It makes you that hard to touch when you're dashing around. Like, it, there's a reason why this is consistently called the best dash Arcana in the game, bar none. Like, I love... So many Arcana in this game. Frostwing, Magma Rush, Frostfane, Thunder Lion, Razor Burst. All of those, with a couple of exceptions, are fantastic Arcana that have that have beautiful effects on the battlefield. But none of it is as good as just a simple defensive blink. This is the equivalent of Blink or Misty Step. And that is why it's the best dash arcana in the game. Because when you don't want to take damage, all you have to do is say no and teleport away. It's just that good. And if you're looking for a way to get good at the game, while, while you know, just while you're getting better, while you're understanding enemy patterns, understanding situations, understanding your own spell combination, you take this, and then once you've mastered the game and you want to blaze a trail through it, you take this. This is the best Dash Arcana bar none. And the reason why I don't use it in my videos is because it makes the game too easy. That's why I don't use Chaotic Rift. Not because I dislike it, but because I like it too much. So... Now that we're at the very end of the video, you might be going, well, what are those two are what are those two symbols that haven't been used yet? You've been through all 23 Dash Arcana, what are those? Those are Dash Arcana that were replaced in the Phantom update. This is a spell called I believe it's called Snare Rush or Snare Trap. This created a series of vines in your wake that would just grab enemies and root them in place. It was replaced by Tunneling Drive, and honestly, I wish they had kept this one, because this one was good. Then this one is Gust Burst. This was replaced by Wind Salvo in 
the Phantom update. And what do you know, the two, the two Arcanas that were brought in in the Phantom update that replaced two that were legitimately pretty interesting are at the bottom of the list. And it's pretty easy to tell because these two are damn near carbon copies of each other with some minor differences, and they're both awful. So, that is the deal with those last two Arcana on the list. Those were never... Well, I'm not going to say never meant to be in the game, because obviously they were. But those are no longer a part of this game, and thus they are labeled not appearing in this game. But if you want to search online for an earlier version of the game from before the Phantom update, you can still play with those Arcana. Would I recommend it? The game has changed and improved so much since the Phantom update that it would be silly to want to go back and experience what it was like before then. Like, do you want to go back to the times when Blazing Lariat and Tectonic Drill could send you into the Abyss? I don't think so! So, that is the tier list. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree with my choices? Do you just want an excuse to say, hey you, Mr. Fatass? Whatever your thoughts and opinions are, comment below and let's have a civil discussion about it. I'm already aware that there are some people who are furiously typing away who want to know why I disrespect their baby so much, and by that I mean Ignition Russian Bubble Blast. I've already given you my reasons, now you give me yours. But, this was a long video, so if you made it all the way through, I want to thank you for stopping in and spending a large portion of your free time here with me today. Like, this is going to go into the, like, the 88-89 minute mark, I think. And that's as long as some feature-length films, so... If you stuck all the way through me, I... All the way through with me, I really do appreciate it, and... I thank you guys very much for spending so much time with me today. It really does mean a lot to me. I hope you're having a fantastic day or night wherever you may happen to be. Remember, keep the discussions about the tier list civil, because ultimately I want to know not just what you like, but why you like it. Because I am ultimately a man of science. I am willing to change my mind, but it's... I've already given you my reasonings and my theories and hypotheses. Now it's up to you to present the burden of proof that changes my mind. So with that, I am calling it and calling it the end of the video here. You guys have a wonderful day, wonderful night, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker and take care everybody.